Well, there won't be any problems if the feast starts at that time. Everything has already been prepared. Mr. Zubair, I finished telling things up here. Well, except for the guests. <sighs> Is a simple reply really that much to ask of our guests? It's affecting our arrangements! Oh, it'll be fine. Besides, it never hurts to get things ready in advance. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. The feast will be held sooner or later, right? Hey, Milu! Traveler, Paimon! We got your letters, so here we are! You're the best! The other guests haven't even replied yet. Huh? Are we the only ones that have arrived? Yeah. I had someone deliver letters to all of our guests. But maybe everyone is still busy with other things. Look, I get it. Sumeru is in an extremely important period of transition right now, but even if your friends are important figures, they shouldn't just ignore your request like this. Nilu is Sumeru's number one celebrity, after all. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am to talk to people with good taste. If you consider enjoying Nilu's dances having good taste, then almost everybody has good taste. Because Paimon thinks Everybody will love her performance. That's right. We all think she's amazing, too. Nilu is an absolute favorite among those of us who frequent the Grand Bazaar. For Outlanders, you have a great eye. Master Zubair, let's have a vote for the most outstanding audience members next time. <laughs> I think these two may win. Nonsense. It is not for us to determine the value of an audience. But, indeed, we could try giving gifts to people with particularly good taste. I heard there's a device in Fontaine called a camera that can record people's appearances as pictures. Such pictures would make superb gifts. Ooh, good idea. I wonder where we can find one. Uh, I don't want you giving pictures of me to everyone. I'm satisfied just being able to perform here. There's always a lot going on at the Grand Bazaar. Yeah, and that's why I love it here. Traveler and Paimon, could you help confirm if the letters were actually delivered? If for some reason they didn't receive the letters, then please tell everyone that there will be a feast here. Yeah, we can also check out how everything in Sumeru is going now. Hmm. When I wrote the letters, I heard that Dia was in Port Ormos, and Alhatham was at the Academia. As for Sino, we've only heard that he appears at the Academia from time to time. I'm not too sure about Rahman's whereabouts. My guess is that he's with Dia. As for Dunyarzad, I just hope she's feeling better. I sent her a letter, but I was afraid of disturbing her. If you have time, Please ask about her for me. Okay, got it. Let's go, Traveler. seen all hate them anywhere. It seems Scribe Al-Haytham has gone to the house of Dana. You should be able to find him there. 
But you're already the second group of people I've seen looking for him today. He must be quite the busy man. Oh? Who else was looking for him? Mr. Cave was just here asking about him. You wouldn't believe how terrible their relationship is. And now you two are here. Don't tell me everyone's here looking for gossip about the sages. No way! We're strictly here on business. <laughs> ah, I see. Sorry, I thought maybe everyone's as interested in rumors about the sages as I am. should be around here somewhere, right? Oh! He's over there! But it looks like he might not have time for us. Just put down that worthless book and tell me what happened in the Academia. This is not just some worthless book. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find a physical book like this in Sumeru? It doesn't matter. It's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Listen, I came back today only to hear that the sages have disappeared. Oh? You sound surprised. I thought you would already know the inside story. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scribe, not me. So just tell me what you know already. Well, I almost became a sage. Huh? Oh, don't sound too surprised now. You're the renowned Kave, light of the Kasharawar. Besides, as a master builder and craftsman, chances are you'll be appointed as a sage too. Hmm, why do I feel like you don't really mean it? Huh, <laughs> what makes you say that? Why would you question my heartfelt sincerity? Maybe it's because you've never said anything good about me before. Yeah, well, I share a similar sentiment, and anyone who knows you as well as I do would surely do the same. Ah, oh, you... See? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. Your ridiculous and arrogant attitude always gets in the way. <laughs> it seems that you really can't stand my personality. Ha! Huh. What was your first clue? Well, then you might as well move out of my house. Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I see. Ugh, and don't change the subject. You, a sage? What a joke. The Academia might as well just close tomorrow. Are they having a fight? <sighs> Forget what's going on with the Academia. Haven't you been busy with your construction project? Tell me, when are you going to build yourself a mansion? Don't get me started. I get angry just thinking about it. So, what great building did our master architect work on this time? Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. No, I think we deserve to know. Where were you when Sumeru needed you most? I was in the desert for a large project, but considering Haravatat's utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Unlike a true... Uh, hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? Well, 
While you were out fiddling around in the desert, many people came together to save Sumeru from a crisis. Ha! And you think I'd believe that? Look, all you really need to know is that Azar and all his accomplices have all been overthrown. Huh? What nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> it's no skin off my nose if you don't believe me. It's not like my Darshan was the one trying to apply for funding from the Grand Sage. Hmm. Yours, though, on the other hand. You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Oh, it's you two. What's the matter? We're running some errands for Nilu. Have you received her letter? Letter? Nilu said she sent out a letter inviting everyone to a celebration feast in two days at the Grand Bazaar. We'll also be celebrating Zaino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. If she addressed the letter to all Haytham of the Academia, then the letter should have gone to my office. I've been busy these days, so I haven't had time to check for any new mail at my office. I only now have some free time to attend to personal matters. Have you always been so busy with your work? Of course not. I'm only busy these days because several sages have been dismissed recently and the whole academia was practically turned upside down. Kainari told us they all went to train in the Avidia Forest. Apparently they will spend the rest of their lives there. That is already the best possible ending for the likes of them. Four of the six great sages were possessed by their desire for power and attempted to create a new god. In order to pull it off, they even imprisoned the other two rational sages. To imagine such things could take place in the academia. Hmm. I don't know where to begin. Yeah, you're right. Huh. Feels kind of strange to hear them called that after all this time. But then again, the six great schools sounded pretty impressive too. Yes, at least that's how they're supposed to sound. It's said that when the Academia was first founded, the Dendro Archon herself established the six great schools, each representing one of the six different types of wisdom. Numerous Darshans have sprung up and faded, only the six Darshans attaching themselves to the six great schools have stood the test of time and obtained permanent seats in the academia. Now, the six Darshans are nearly synonymous with the six great schools, and the leaders selected for the schools are the six great sages. Among the six great sages, there is one central leader, the Grand Sage. Unfortunately, only the sages from Vahumana and Amorta remain now. They were imprisoned for opposing Azar, and were only rescued after Azar's downfall. So who's managing things in the other four schools now? Do they need to find someone new? Yes. Normally, new sages are selected based on a strict set of criteria. Oh, didn't you just say something about becoming a sage? If they pick you, then we'd have a huge connection in Sumeru. Yes, about that. <clears throat> you didn't let me finish my sentence. The person in charge of personnel affairs nominated me to be the Grand Sage in place of Azar and help Lesser Lord Kusanali manage the academia. But I refused. Huh? But why? Ugh, can't you be a little more ambitious? I'm not even interested in being one of the six great sages. Like I said before, I don't like being a leader. That's not my job either. I'm only responsible for handling important affairs within the academia before the new sages take office. <laughs> and the first thing I'll do is reject Kasharawar's application for funding. By the way, who was that other person just now? Is he your friend? Do we look like friends? Paimon doesn't know! That's why Paimon's asking! 
His name is Kave, my roommate. You could say he's the representative for Ksharwar scholars. Which is exactly why he always has so many problems. So everything that's happened recently must be a huge change for the people of Sumeru. Such is the work of the Academia Scribe. Well, anyway, no matter how busy you are, since you are our planner, remember to attend the celebration feast in two days. All right, I'll see you there. Paimon, I hear? Huh? Oh, it's been a while. How are you doing? Junior Dad! It's been so long since we've seen you! I'm doing well. I can go as far as saying I have never been happier in my entire life. I don't know if you've heard, but Elzar has completely disappeared, and all the patients have recovered. Are you kidding? Knowing them and the connections they've got, I'm sure they've heard about it. Yeah! That's right. My lady is feeling better now, so I'm accompanying her for a walk. Why do you still call me that, Dia? You've already informed my father of your resignation. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to calling you my lady. Old habits die hard. Resignation? You mean you're quitting? Yeah, I might start losing my edge if I keep being a bodyguard for the Homayanis. You know that my parents and I are fond of you, and that we appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a problem if you wish to continue to be our bodyguard. <laughs> I'm not a woman that's easily persuaded. You should know that by now, my lady. When I took this job, I had already decided that I'd quit as soon as you'd recovered. It's time for me to get back out there and chase that horizon. So what are you going to do now if you're not going to be a bodyguard anymore? <laughs> I want to take a risky job and put my body to the test again. Huh? But we literally just finished one of the most dangerous jobs ever. Are you getting bored already? I know. If I hadn't joined in that plan with you, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I guess I still get fired up by that feeling of going all out in a fight. It made me realize that I'm still a mercenary through and through. Life is short, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. And as a desert dweller, I'm still not completely ready to settle down on this side of the wall. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. I thought he was joking. We just came from talking with Al Haytham at the Academia. 
Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the Academia? What? I heard that Azar and his cronies fell from power, and all Hatham told me that now was a good time to find a job in the Academia, but only if I wanted to. Whoa! Hyman can't see you being anything other than a mercenary! <laughs> me neither. Oh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up as a scholar. Ugh, ugh, forget about it. I wouldn't last ten seconds in there. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. So he suggested I find some work in the academia. But you know, if you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a mantra. Because you're super amazing! <laughs> the Matra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it'd be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for me. I don't want to see you go, but... I'll respect your decision. I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the better. That makes me happy too. But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Before long, we'll be a dying breed. So I'd better get to work while I still can. Huh? You make it sound like you're leaving now! Well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. So, have you been in Port Ormos this entire time? We were wondering if you had received a letter from Nilu. Oh, uh, did Nilu write to us? She heard that you were seen in Port Ormos, so she sent the letter here. Huh. It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately, and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back, the receptionist is usually off napping on the job. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so the old man on duty is also usually dozing off. So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. I'll go check later. No wonder there wasn't a reply. You never received the letter. Good thing Nilu asked us to come and kick on that. Ah, uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to specifically write to us like that. Yes, she said they were preparing a victory feast in the Grand Bazaar, and we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. She was hoping you could come. Great, I'll be sure to attend. Help me in too. But is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I just show up looking like this? Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about that. If anything, I think she wants to see us as our most natural selves. All right, then this is how I'll show up. The feast will be held in two days, so don't forget. Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. We'll see you there. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know where Sino and Raman are? The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Normally, no one knows his whereabouts. Oh. But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in our village. You can try your luck there. As for Raman, your guess is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something to discuss with Sino. You can ask Sino when you meet him. Don't mention it. You'd better get going.
since we last visited Aru Village. Ah! There's Sino! Hmm. What brings you here? We recovered well, and Tanari agreed to let us leave, so now we're out and about again! It seems Gendarvaville's medical treatment is still as good as ever. Mm-hmm. And Tainari is recovering well, too. That's good to hear. Yeah. You're the one who brought us to him when we lost consciousness, right? Thanks for that. You're welcome. Tainari has excellent medical skills, and Kale is quite attentive. It was the best place for you. But why are you just standing here like a dead tree? I'm meeting some people. Oh! You mean Candace? I've already talked with Candace and the village chief. They're still at the usual place. You can go there if you'd like to see them. But you know one of the people I'm meeting as well. Oh, by King Deshret's blessing, my friend suddenly appears in the desert. <laughs> Don't tell me you've run into trouble and need us to help now. Oh, you know me? Oh, well, uh, you're pretty famous in the academia. Don't worry, these are our friends. No need to be so guarded. I see. I'm doing well. Many good things have happened recently. Same here. Really, I feel that my whole life has started to shine after suddenly finding a new direction. Oh, tell us everything! Yeah, you go ahead. Alright, well, I suppose I should start by saying... I've decided to leave the Academia. What? It's not that I've given up on being a scholar. Instead, you could say I've found a new identity. I will no longer pursue research like a typical scholar, but I have not completely given up on my relationship to knowledge, either. <laughs> I can see what you're saying now. Uh, what do you mean? I plan to leave the Academia and return to teach here, in the desert. Wow, so you want to become a teacher? Sataria will return to support education here and teach people from the desert. She can't teach everyone on her own, but there are many of us Eremites all over Sumeru. She came to discuss a collaboration with me and hoped that I could bring her ideas to the Eremites. Yes, it's my hope that the Eremites can help me select a group of smart people with the best aptitude for teaching. I'll teach them, and after they've finished learning from me, they can go educate more people. That is the true meaning of education and the spreading of knowledge. The people of King Deshret suffer from sandstorms, exile, and ignorance. Miss Ataria is more than welcome to come teach here. Her arrival is like a star shining in the desert night. The stars have always guided caravans, thieves, soldiers, and travelers who get lost in the night. They lead those in the dark out of trouble and back to safety. Oh, please. Where is all of this coming from? I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed. You deserve these compliments. Mercenaries are accustomed to danger and don't fear death, which is why we recognize extraordinary actions that common people would easily overlook. Sataria's idea will bring much good to many people. At first, I feared it was destined to fail. Everyone knows that the Academia doesn't allow scholars to teach in the desert without permission. As you know, all knowledge is under their surveillance and control, and very few desert dwellers are as lucky as me. But what I heard at that time has been haunting my heart, as if there were lightning bolts constantly bombarding my soul. Sataria, you tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become. Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. Miss. These words sparked something in me. And I knew that I had to bring something back to my people after going home. I gathered up the courage to approach the Grand Sage, only to find that he was no longer at the Academia. 
Lord Sino told me that Azar didn't belong there anymore. Azar has received much needed punishment. Though, if you ask me, it may have been too light. <sighs> you probably have already heard. Lord Sino helped me obtain permission to leave the Academia for the desert, and accompanied me here to discuss collaboration with members of the Aramites. My plan was able to go smoothly thanks to him and Ramon. You're all doing so much for the desert! Aside from that, I also have some other business to discuss with Sino. Lesser Lord Kusanali has allocated many resources to support and develop the desert. I've done some business for her, and part of it required the assistance of the Aramites. I applied for a few batches of educational materials from the Academia, and sent them to several groups in the desert, as instructed by Lesser Lord Kusanali. I believe the people will make good use of them. That's exactly what the people here need. Physical books and other related items. If it weren't for Sino and Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'm afraid we'd never be able to get our hands on them. Apart from this, the Academia is also recruiting scholars that are willing to teach in the desert. I'll let you and Satarian know as soon as I have any more news. We must be persistent about this, and maintain these resources to ensure long-term effectiveness. This is the first time in hundreds of years we've had a glimmer of hope. I think this may be the turning point for the desert. Remember these words. Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. I hope people with wisdom like that priest will rise again among the desert dwellers. Then we'll once again see the wisdom and glory that once shook the world. Enough about us. Are you here to discuss some business too? No, not at all. We're actually here on behalf of Milu. Milu wanted to write to everyone, but she wasn't sure where the letters should be sent, so she asked us to come find everyone personally. A celebration feast will be held in two days at the Grand Bazaar. She hopes that all of you will be able to attend. At the feast, we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. Uh, although, judging from your appearance, it seems you've already been reinstated. Paimon thought you would only start working for the Academia after the feast. Celebration? Feast? It's the first I've heard of it. Tainari was right. He really didn't know. <laughs> this feast is for you, Sino. Sounds to me like you'll have to be there. <sighs> it's rare to see that kind of expression from Lord Sino. You must not like feasts very much. No, not really. But I'll go. Well, I still have a lot to handle here. Besides, I need to look after Miss Sataria in the desert, so I'll have to pass. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. Although, if you'd be so kind, please give a message to Miss Nilu for me. The message is... I'm sorry for how I treated you before, but now I understand the beauty of your dance. It's like a light shining in the sky. You and the art you symbolize are not only beautiful, but also lively and powerful. So much so that it was prohibited. Please keep dancing, and someday, I'll be able to appreciate your art in person. Okay, we've got all that down! Our job here is complete as well! Oh, Sino, remember, party's in two days! Make sure you're there! Got it.